EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Just as we were ready for air, it was the Colts emerging from the locker room to great fanfare here in Indy. They're ready to go as the Colts get set to match up with the Houston Texans. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. At their own 29-yard line. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Now the first carry from Marlon Mack. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. Brings up third and three. From the gun, Rivers. And he'll find Pittman. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. A pickup of five that time and a first down. That throw's not going to get him a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. We, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. He kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Here's Hines. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. The ball carrier. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, if you're up five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit. And that's what he did on that play. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 27-yard line. 19 yards there on the catch and run. On first and 10, Rivers. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Well, the gap man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and 10. Throwing again. Rivers looking middle, and it's incomplete. Zach Paschal, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. The pass underneath, here's Hines with it. And they stop him short of the first, as he can only get to the 20. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area. But they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. Blankenship's kick is good. 
And the Colts hit the scoreboard first. It's 3 0. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. They have a bottom line. They wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Texans back out there and ready to go. 23-yard line. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10 at their own 23. And he'll throw right away. And this one complete to Will Fuller. And they're able to get this one across the 35. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. DeForest Buckner in on the tackle. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature in the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Colts three, Texans nothing. Second and nine. From the gun, here's Watson. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. That's sacked by the DN, Danico Autry. No doubt, that's a very good play defensively right there, because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. Going to need something special here on third and long. After that sack, what does Watson have in his arsenal? He can run for it, and he will. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's four. And they had an extra defensive back on the field on that play, and the coverage was excellent. He tried to pull it down and run for it, but they rallied to him and kept him short of a first down. On fourth down, here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. Call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Three yard pickup. Look, all any running Looks back wants is a little seven. bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. 
And that is incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. As Sanchez on to punt here as he sends this one away. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Now left side on the swing pass. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid gain. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now an option play on second down. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Four yards the pick up, first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Out of the gun, Watson. His throw incomplete. Randall Cobb, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Throwing again is Watson. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 15 yards, a first down. You always worry about those smaller receivers running through that gnarly patch of land in the middle of the field. But he did a really nice job there holding on to the football and protected himself as best he could while completing the play. From the 50, it's Watson. And this one grabbed by Darren Fells. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught and you don't give up much run after the catch. Watson trying to get his guys moving. Looking to throw again on second down. Watson, Fuller brings it in over the middle. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, Watson sliding out of the pocket. Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Second and short now following the fumble. A shotgun snap for Watson. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. 
This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Operating from the gun, Watson. He may try and run for this. When in doubt, do it yourself as he keeps it for three and a first down. Now that's disappointing for the defense. They had the advantage, had excellent coverage all over the field, but they let him get away, scramble, and pick up a first down and inside the five-yard line. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. They'll run it with Johnson. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. From the gun, Watson, and got his man, it's caught, touchdown, Houston, Darren Fells, as the first half is winding down, and the Texans have taken the lead. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury, and it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run, he finds himself open for an easy touchdown. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. Makes the score Texans 7, Colts 3. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Rodgers on the return. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. First down, Rivers. That's into the hands of Pascal. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. Indy set to go on offense once more. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Final play of the half, Rivers. He'll take a shot downfield for Pittman. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off inside the 10. And he will be brought down as time has now run out on this first half of action. So we reach intermission here in a low-scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. And able to get this out to the 25. And now out comes Houston. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Out of the gun, he'll throw. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Wow. 
Watson to give. This is Johnson. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. The tackle made by Bobby Okariki. A three-yard pickup. And it's third down. Watson just beating the play clock. Finding fouls complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. The first down carry here for Johnson. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Johnson on the carry. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. From the 41, Watson. It's caught left side by Cooks. Brandon Cooks. Touchdown, Houston. Brandon Cooks. 59 yards. And the Texans will extend their lead. And sometimes those slants they can be so tough to defend after the catch. It, it, it just happens so quickly. And really, what gets set up there is how quickly everything happens. Ball's out of the hands of the passer in a hurry, and he just takes it and goes. And he went all the way into the end zone. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. They trail offense first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. We'll see what they have up their sleeve. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Hines and no room that time getting it to about the 46 the ball carrier just a yard on the first down carry so it's second and nine this is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game it's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people hard to get them started again occasionally the run only got a yard here's second and nine working out of the gun rivers and he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. The lightning rod, J.J. Watt with a sack. Well, we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot, but he tried to conjure up some escapability, but there was no way he was getting away on that one. Now that sack leaves Rivers and the Colts with a third and long. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. And this is going to be incomplete. We're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. 
Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And here comes the Texans now. And they're hoping to redo their efforts of the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. And they'll start the drive on the ground with Johnson. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. He really held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Operating from the gun. Watson, that's caught by his tight end, Jordan Akins. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. It's a first down on a gain of 10. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode. And he is going to be taken down. And that should be the final play of this third quarter. Credit the sack to the Oregon Duck to Forrest Buckner. Back now in Indianapolis. It's the Texans in control of the football and leading this game as well as we start the fourth. On second down now, it's Johnson. And nothing doing here is this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy is nimble and quick, more than a space eater. He just made a great play there. The Texans on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third down and 12. He can run for it, and he will. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. And, partner, I would guess that in his headset, he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on to punt for Houston. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Rivers and the Colts going to come up first and 10, just shy of the 30. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. Now the second down throw on target. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. Those short little routes probably going to be open. The defense, they'll let those happen, especially when they can make an inbounds tackle. Yeah, where's Coach Madden when you need him? He always talked about taking what the defense gives you, but sometimes you have to know when you have to take more. That was one of those situations. On third down, Rivers. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. What a throw right there for the first down. He has taken some real punishment in this game, but still standing in the pocket completing that one. He's a flat-out warrior. There's no question about that. How about him stepping up into the teeth of the rush and delivering there for that big strike and that big pickup? A first down throw here for Rivers. A good throw here finding Pascal. 
And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. That catch good for only a couple. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. Second and eight. They'll throw again. Rivers. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. They get seven there on the screen. It'll set up a third down. It's a gain of seven. Brings up third and one. Rivers has been through this many times as he'll hustle his guys to the line. On third and one, here's Rivers. He's going to let it fly. And it's knocked away and incomplete. We've seen that the deep ball's been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. He was true on his first. This a tough one from 49 yards away. And it is good. Oh, that one looked to be in trouble the whole way, but it does get over the bar. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14-6 to now. So you knew one way or another that they needed the two scores. They get the easy one out of the way. Now they'll get the ball back, hopefully. Yeah, and the question is, how do you accomplish that? Do you onside kick it? Or since you have all three timeouts, do you kick it deep? To me, I'm playing field position. With all three timeouts, I kick it deep and try and pin them back there. and 90 seconds to go. This will be an onside kick. And the effort snuffed out. The Texans' hands team recovers. Is recovered. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that one. They needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it. But even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. They'll run on first down. Johnson, and he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They run. It's Johnson. And he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here, too. And he may get a few more tacked on for good measure. Wow, a personal foul at this stage in the fourth. Hard to believe. Really hard to believe. And now that glow of hope that you had begins to flicker out, doesn't it? Yep. 
So a big penalty there on the face mask leads to first and 10. Down to a knee here as the Texans look to let the clock roll. Down to an egos Watson, and that should just about do it for this ball game. I don't know about you, partner, but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair. Low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art, but maybe in your world, a little bit of a work of art. You like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zero. So Houston going to come away here with the victory. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage, offense sells tickets. Defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them to just a field goal? That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan, pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish, just love the execution, love the tenacity, love the way they finished. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long from Indy.